would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, I should have made note um, under item number one that we do have a quorum. We have all board members in attendance at the high school. Um, I believe Jennifer Nolan is virtual. Is that correct, Jen? I'm here. Okay, thank you. Um, item number three, we have the approval of the agenda. We have a motion. Matt Vinner, second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. Um, the next item on the agenda is public participation. We have um, three uh, emails that came in and um, I will start with the first email. It is from Nicole Ren Rinaldi, 65 Edgewood Avenue and the subject is board vacancy. Good evening, my name is Nicole Rinaldi and I am writing tonight to be considered for the vacancy position on the Board of Education. I have lived in town for over 15 years and have two children who attend school and district. I'm an elementary school teacher with 19 years of experience. I would like to do my part to support the education system in Thomason. Sincerely, Nicole Rinaldi. The second public comment is from Nicole Malloyd, 158 Atwood Road. Subject is virtual day. Good evening. I would like to be simple and straight to the point. Our children must return back to the classroom five days a week. The first excuse used was that cases may climb and we may need to revert back. After that excuse failed, the next was that we don't have the funds to employ our staff and clean the school within budget. What has happened to the money that was not used for busing back in 2020? From what you quoted to the Republican American back in April 2020, Francine, you stated that in those short two months, the town would save approximately $400,000. Regardless, our children's education could, shouldn't come as a cost at the end of the school year when this town has had ample time to attribute all efforts to this crisis. All the surrounding towns have gone back five days a week and we continue to have no cases this month along with a downward trend to 2.37% according to the data chart you recently sent out. I should not feel like we are begging people for our children to go back to school and that that's what this has come to. In addition to this, I'm aware there are children who have required the Wednesday in-person day for their special requirements. There are ways we can accommodate these children along with our children going back five days as well. I'm a mother of a special needs child who hasn't gotten the extra day in person and that's affecting my son just as much. Again, enough time has passed in order for you to figure this out. Working as a pediatric nurse in a world renowned facility, I have watched the devastating effects this pandemic has left upon these children. It's time for me to advocate for my son so he is not another percentage. The third public comment that came in via email is from Marissa McGee, 45 Woodbridge Lane. As a parent of a first grade student at Black Rock School, I'm writing to implore the board to revisit the decision to keep Wednesdays remote. At this point in time, we have seen the statewide positivity rate at or below 2% for several consecutive weeks for the governor's weekly COVID update. The low positivity rate coupled with school staff being eligible for the vaccinations support a full five day per week return to the physical classroom. Although improvements were made to extend the instructional period of Wednesdays, the remote structure, especially for elementary age students like my son, is not a replacement for a full day of in-person instruction. My son, like many, is at daycare on Wednesdays and working independently to participate in the remote schedule. He is not getting a full day's worth of instruction equal to a full day of in-person instruction. And I am sure many of the younger students are in the same situation. 
At this point, there is no justification to keep Wednesdays remote as the COVID rates do not support anything other than a full in-person model that includes all five days. With teachers and support staff eligible for the vaccine, this just further supports a return to normalcy and likely will cause the positivity rate in the state to decline further. The governor has recently announced lifting many occupancy restrictions statewide, including changing his travel restrictions to a recommendation, a further indication that we need to revisit the current restricted in-person model as COVID numbers are declining. Students, especially younger ones, need in-person instruction and depriving them of that for even one day a week needs to be strongly justified and warranted. Thank you for your consideration. Uh, for those of you that did send in your public comment, we will respond to you in um, our normal manner. Is there anyone who is present at the high school who would like to address the board? Um, my name is Becky Chikinka. I live at 663 Walnut Hill Road. Good evening, Superintendent Cost, Chairperson Campbell, and other members of the Board of Education. Most of you know I'm Becky Chikinka, and I'm one of the candidates seeking to fill the seat vacancy on the Board of Education. This vacancy is for a short period of time, approximately eight months. I believe in this period of uncertainty we are in now, it's important to have someone who's familiar with the Board of Education policy, <clears throat> budget and processes. You know, coming in as a new member, it takes some time as well as training to become familiar and comfortable with the material. <clears throat> in addition to attending the recent virtual meeting, I also have six years of experience on the board. I've been a resident of Thompson for over 27 years. <clears throat> I have entered each of our school buildings as a parent, a board of ed member, and a member of the community for various functions or events. All three of my children have attended and graduated from Thomason School. As you can see from my letter of endorsement, I'm still very much an active member of our community volunteering as well as for the schools serving on the Education Enrichment Fund and the Booster Fund. <clears throat> as elected members of the community and the voice of local residents, I'm asking for you to fill this vacancy with myself, a candidate with experience who would be ready on day one to serve the student, staff, and community as an effective member of the Board of Education. Thank you for your time. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Matt Van Ormer second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstain? This is Jennifer. I'm going to abstain. Okay. Thanks, Jen. Motion carries. The next item on the agenda are the recognitions. We will start with the February Rotary Student of the Month, Rachel Fole. Rachel is being recognized as the February Rotary Student of the Month. This recognition comes as a result of Rachel's hard work in and out of the classroom. Rachel certainly deserves a recognition as an active and valuable member of our student body for her extracurricular activities and her willingness to help out on any project. On behalf of the Rotary Club, Rachel and her parents will be invited to a luncheon to honor Rachel at a date and time to be determined. On behalf of the Board of Education, Rachel will receive a Barnes and Noble gift card and a certificate in the mail for her outstanding achievement. Rachel was not able to join us this evening. Congratulations, Rachel, and keep up the great work. Um, our next recognition are the 
Students of the Month for Thomaston Public Schools. We have for kindergarten, Nella Ramat. Grade one, Adelina Pellet. Grade two, Brooke Callahan. Grade three, Olivia Mower. Grade four, Emily Mazzarella. Grade five, Elise Ariola. Grade six, Colton Patchell. Grade seven, Mackenzie Chassie. Grade eight, Andrew Soria, grade nine, Claire Saunders, grade 10, Sophia Hires, grade 11, Zachary Stevenson, and grade 12, Rachel Full. Congratulations to all the students of the month. Our next recognition is for Britta Sagafi, the Litchfield County Poster Contest winner for the 2022 Connecticut Fire Prevention Calendar. Britta has been selected as one of the Litchfield County Fire Prevention Poster Contest winners. Britta's poster will be featured in the 2022 Connecticut Fire Prevention Calendar. Congratulations, Britta. Our next recognition is for Kirsten Sundell. Kirsten is a senior who was featured on the What's Right with School segment on the Channel 8 News on February 23rd. Kirsten was interviewed and her artwork was featured. Her paintings have gained much attention for their social justice theme and her artistic vision. Francine, were you gonna show a clip of her artwork? Okay. I'm going to excuse myself for just a moment because people are texting me saying that they cannot hear. So hold on just one moment, please. I am unmuted. Uh, so I, I'm uncertain as to why people can't hear. So uh, Beth, can I borrow your phone so that we can play it? Please excuse me to the audience at home. I want to be certain everyone is able to hear this video. Francine, can I interrupt? I think that I've had this issue before and you need to mute yourself uh, while the video is playing. My computer is muted, I'm sorry. You're saying I should leave it unmuted? Is that what you're saying? No. Um, I'm saying that while a video is playing, uh, the person hosting the video needs to mute them themselves or they get this weird sort of feedback. That's what's happened to me in the past. I don't know if it's the current issue. Yeah, and I am muted other than this moment to answer you. So I'm- I, I think, I think it's just that the volume is down on your computer. So it's not playing the sound through. Okay, hang on one sec. 
maybe. I'm at 100%. So I'm, I'm really um, perplexed. I'm sorry, I can't help. Let's see. Nope, sorry. I'm gonna leave myself unmuted and see if that makes a difference. We'll try that option. Okay, what I'd like to be, oh, can you hear me? Can, uh, can I, am I? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, so sorry. sorry. Can you mute that? If I, I mute myself. myself. I be able to be heard. Working on it. Okay. okay. Sure. There it is. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. So sorry. So I have to tell them where they can see the video. Okay. It'll it's on Facebook and it's also on Twitter on our Thomaston BOE Twitter account as well as our Facebook account. I am Embarrassed, and I, I greatly apologize for this technical glitch. Yes, um, Kirsten, we apologize um, into the public. You can view the video on Facebook on the Thomas and Golden Bears Facebook page. And Sue Santivasi is going to be posting it to uh, the Thomason's YouTube channel as well. Thank you, Mm-hmm. The next recognition is the Thompson Center School 100th Day of School Contest. And on February 29, 2021, was the 100th day of school. Grades four, five, and six winners were chosen from student entries with the best answers and explanations for their work. There was a tie for the best response in grade four between Christopher Carlo and Tyler Callahan. Ryan Svoken was the winner in grade five and Ariana Rinaldi won the grade six contest. Each of the grade level winners will be awarded with a $10 gift card to Cutie Pies. In addition to these prizes, Ms. Miller's homeroom won the prize for the class with the highest percentage of participation in the contest. These students will be treated to Mona Lisa pizza to be served in the cafeteria. Congratulations. Okay, um, next on the agenda, we have a presentation. First, we have uh, the preschool lottery with Andrea Peters, Director of Pupil Services. Andrea, are you can everybody with hear us? me? Now we can, yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I was slow on the mute button. So um, good, ev good evening, everybody. I, um, I'm presenting on the pre-K lottery that is not happening tonight, and I'm going to explain why. Um, so 
For years, the Thomaston Public Schools has held a lottery to determine which students will be able to participate in our pre-kindergarten program. Each year, we have had more applicants than available slots and therefore ended up with a waiting list. Um, so in order to truly meet the needs of the community, it was apparent to myself, to Superintendent Koss, and the Board of Education that Thomaston Public Schools needed a third pre-kindergarten classroom. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Superintendent Koss and the Thomaston Board of Education for their support of a budget request for a third pre-kindergarten classroom. They supported this request, not only because of community need, but also because our data provides evidence that a pre-kindergarten education pays educational dividends well into the future. In other words, students who have had an access to pre-kindergarten education have demonstrated increased academic achievement throughout their entire academic career. So because of the Board of Education and superintendent costs, we have added one full day classroom of pre-kindergarten. Um, Thomaston Public Schools so will now operate two full-time pre-kindergarten classrooms, plus the one classroom of half day AM, half day PM. Another development of note is that superintendent costs and the Board of Education supports tuition-free kindergarten. So not only are we opening a third classroom, but we are also offering all pre-kindergarten education through Thomaston Public Schools without cost to our community members. This year, uh, due to the opening of a third classroom, we have a sufficient number of slots relative to the number of applicants. In other words, we don't need to hold the lottery this year because we have enough slots to allow for all of our applicants to participate in our pre-kindergarten program. I wanna point out though, however, that I anticipate that next year we will need to hold a lottery because I expect far more applicants than available slot, slots Sorry, next year. Um, and this is due to the fact that our pre-kindergarten is now fully tuition free. And that fact, I don't believe is widely known, but through word of, word of mouth, it will be. And also given that most families uh, know about our program through word of mouth, I expect that this will spread um, and we will have far more applicants this year. So um, in summary, I just wanna thank the Board of Education and I wanna thank Superintendent Koss for approving the tuition-free um, pre-kindergarten program for Thomaston residents and for approving the additional pre-kindergarten classroom. And I also wanna congratulate all of the families who applied because basically here we are for a lottery and you are all winners tonight. So. Um, you guys will all receive additional information and registration instructions in the coming week. I want to say thank you. And um, if you have any questions, please reach out to myself uh, directly, um, you know, just for anything moving forward. But, but just thank you all so much for your support. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you. Our next presentation is um, Marissa Van Ormer, who is with us tonight. You want to come up, Marissa? And Marissa, I'll put the slides for you. Hello, my name is Marissa. Hello, everyone.
Turn your mic on, man. Or... Okay. Try again. Can, can we hear? Can we hear now? Okay. All right. <laughs> um. Oh yeah. So next slide, please. <laughs> All right, so um, uh, so LOS kind of, I have a personal relationship too. So um, my childhood best friend, Max, was diagnosed with bulky stage two Hodgkin's lymphoma uh, about a year ago. Um, he's currently in remission and he's healing, but it's organizations like LOS that help that, that helped him. So that's why I was really excited to be given this opportunity for him for the past eight years to be able to participate in. Um, yeah, so points to home cancer. So this is the fundraiser that I've uh, started because of this to help my dad. Um, so what it is, is we buy Pints of Arthur's ice cream um, for how they sell it to a business. And then we, uh, for delivery fee and for like just purchasing, it's $5 a pint and we deliver it to towns, to Thomaston and surrounding areas. And I've been doing that for the past eight weeks. Um, I probably put in about like 10, what, 10, 15 hours a week for this stuff, but it's, it's it it works. We got we're doing some great fundraising stuff. So um, I was able to do some in school one, three in school ones. Um, those were uh, such a big success. Um, it was great being able to like bring it to the school community, which I'm so fond of. Next slide. Please. Um, so this wasn't able to happen, but I'm gonna talk about something else. <laughs> so um, we're actually in the last two days of my fundraiser. So that. So on Wednesday is our, the final auction and grand finale. So just a little bit about that. Um, the auction is something that LLS does annually for the student of the years. Um, we have four or five auction items from su stuff like um, there's a photography basket from Christy Grabber and there's um, like a local local business one, like to the Axe Story place. And so there's just so many. And so obviously it's a presentation. So I can't really like put the link up there and have y'all click on it, but I can definitely forward that to anyone who's interested, um, as well as the grand finale. So I'm very excited for this. I feel like it's kind of like the last going out with a bang for all the hard work we put into this. Um, so that is virtual. Normally it's this big crazy thing, but now we're doing it virtually. Um, so that is this upcoming Wednesday, and that is where the final um, fund the final funds are being counted. It's just kind of like a celebration of all the hard work we've done from all the candidates all across the state. Yeah, all right, that's it, thank you. Great job. Thank you, Marissa. No, so don't go so quickly. I think there might be a couple of questions oh, no, for you. Any questions? <laughs> Well, I can personally attest to um, purchasing from the fundraiser and the ice cream was delicious. So Thank you. <laughs> um, the link though, for the, the um, auction is, yeah, where I, can we find that? Yeah. Um, I put it on our Facebook. So it's called Bears Getting Cancer as well as the Instagram Bears Getting Cancer. Okay. And my personal. Okay. Thank you. Any other? 
Okay. Hey, the next item on our agenda is the student representatives reports. For academics, the academics are continuing as usual with all days except Wednesday being in-person learning. Oh, sorry, I had to unmute myself. Okay, so for clubs, NHS hosted the monthly All-Star Awards in advisory today. So where slideshows presenting the winners were broadcasted to each advisory. NHS is also planning a blood drive with the American Red Cross on Tuesday, March 16th. And we actually just met the maximum of 36 participants that are willing to donate blood, which is amazing. And this week is also Spirit Week at the high school, which is being hosted by the Student Council. Each day of the week, there is a new dress theme, like today was pajama day, and raffle tickets are being sold at lunch for various prizes, which is gonna be going on throughout the rest of the week until the pep rally on Friday. And there's also a scavenger hunt competition going on throughout the week as well. As the winter season slowly begins to wrap up, the basketball teams complete, compete for the BL title, which are Thompson Lady Bears, one with their current a no record, Boys basketball are currently four and four. The Bears each have four games left in the upcoming two weeks. Following that will be a Berkshire League tournament. The cheerleading team continues to cheer at our home games, bringing some cheer to get our small crowds as well as our at-home viewers excited. Indoor track has been practicing since January with their first meet happening this Thursday, the 11th against Watertown. And then for special events is the pep rally on Friday which is sponsored by student, student council, sorry, and is being set up by the AV club. And so this is just for the upcoming basketball games of Thomason versus Litchfield to wish all of our basketball teams good luck. And that is all. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is the chairperson's report. And in your board packet, you should have received the second quarter honor roll for Thomason High School. It is um, Board Appreciation Month. So you all have a little gift on your desks and thank you all for all the hard work and hours that you put in to the board. Would you like to say anything, Ms. Koss? We greatly appreciate the board. I hope that everyone can hear me. I know that we're having difficulty from my computer, but are you able to hear me now? Yes. 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 Um, I think that uh, just the mere fact of what you heard tonight, uh, about a pre-K program, how you're hearing from our students about things that uh, the board has done to support um, just bringing our district to where we want it to be as a community. Um, there's a whole different level of appreciation, I think, that a town of our size uh, needs to give to the board members because there's a lot of work that goes into your job. And um, and under these conditions of COVID-19, the pressure is even heavier. So I, I want to express my appreciation for your support throughout this particular time, but also um, in my duration here um, in the district, the board has always been supportive because we stick focused on our students. So thank you very much. Thank you, Francine. Uh, the next item under the chairperson's report is uh, the virtual CABE retreat for the Thomaston Board of Education members that was held on March 1st, 2021. And we had four members attend. Um, it was another good session. Um, I did leave my notes at home. I took a lot of notes, I'm sorry. But it was basically, again, about the role of the board, um, the role of the superintendent, how um, we can work better together with communication, with the staff, the community, anybody want to add anything else? But it, it was really good and um, beneficial. The uh, final item, I think, oh, nope, let's see. We have next the formal announcement of the Board of Education vacancy. Um, you all should have received or seen the email that um, Sal Santa Maria has resigned and submitted his resignation to the town. So at this point in our meeting, um, we are going to fill the vacancy if we can tonight. Um, 
both the Republican Town Committee and the Democratic Town Committee have um, endorsed their candidates and you all should have received the emails um, with the qualifications of both. Um, we did have a write-in um, that is wishing to be considered as well. So um, at this time, our candidates would be um, ready for nomination if we have anyone that would like to make a motion. And what we can do is um, we can put them all in the motion, we can put one or two in the motion, and then we can just go around and um, say who we're gonna vote for. So do we have a motion? Do you want the full motion? Do we need the full wording? Just. This is Sarah Ethier. I'll second that. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, this is Dave Calvecchio. I just want to uh, start that the Republican Party has uh, nominated Stephen Carr, a U.S. Marine Corps veteran, president of Hickory Hill Road and a Rotary Club member. He's been in the insurance business and in the, in the uh, transportation uh, field for 20 years. Thank you, David. Is there any other discussion? I know Becky, you, Becky addressed the board tonight and Nicole sent in her letter. Anything else or any other discussion? This is Sari here. I just want to say, I think in the unprecedented times that we have right now, that an, that an experience of someone who's been on the board or someone with an education background is really invaluable. Any other discussion? Okay, we'll start the vote with Matt. Or how do you want to do it? Do you want to raise hands? Do you want to verbal is fine? David? Hey, you like your vote to Stephen Carr. Rock Carr. Sarah? I'll vote for Becky Shapenka. Heather? And I would vote for Becky Shapenka, Jennifer Nolan. Uh, for Stephen. Okay, motion carries. Stephen Carr is appointed to the Board of Education. He will be sworn in by Kathy DuPont um, during office hours as she could not make it to the meeting tonight. Congratulations, Steve. The next item on the agenda is the superintendent's report. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, my report starts with correspondence. Uh, it's rather self-explanatory. Uh, there have been some uh, requests to homeschool and also some residency letters that have gone out um, since we last met. Further correspondence, similar topics. Under correspondence from organizations, you see that we have some from the CABE Board of Ed, the CABE group. We have uh, nothing from CAPS. We do have a correspondence from the United States Department of Education and the Department of Public Health, as well as the Connecticut State Department of Education. Under reports, our administrative reports were uh, shared with you, and they include 
a copy of the three-year reinspection for asbestos. And then we have our enrollment report, which includes our list of distance learners as of the 1st of March. And then we have my distance learning report, which is a summary of the actions taken by this board since the beginning of the school calendar year, which is since the beginning of July. And uh, it's, it's quite telling when you look at it, how we've evolved through the uh, pandemic um, and the actions that have been taken. It also uh, provides you with a summary of uh, what is expected in the very near future. The last time we met, uh, the board decided that they would meet on or before the 31st of March to decide what our next step would be for an instructional model. And I would like it if the board would contemplate a date at this time so that we can get it into our calendar and notify parents if they would like to tune in. I'm suggesting a Monday, preferably the last Monday of the month, so that by then I would have a better idea of how our second dose vaccine dates might affect schools and we can also announce that as well at that meeting. Um, we would be making a decision for how we would return to school after April break. So I'm suggesting that the board consider the 29th of March. Yep, that's fine with me. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll take care of sending out an invitation and we will make an announcement of a special meeting for parents. Uh, other items in my report, oh, uh, just to make a mention of the comments that were made about um, what we will talk about at that March 29th meeting. While I will be answering some of the public comments as typical, please note that if you sent a public comment tonight regarding a decision to be made after April break, that it will be considered at that meeting as well. Just want to make that note for those who submitted public comments. Uh, we have four contracts of note that are under uh, my report at this time. We have one grant, and then we had several fundraisers. Then we move on to personnel. We had three new hires, and I'm proud to say that uh, two of them are Thomason's own. Further, we had some transfers and new assignments, a good number of them, and you'll see those there are self-explanatory. And we had no resignations that made it to this agenda. Uh, we did have one that was submitted today, but it did not make this agenda. Uh, retirements, we had none for this agenda and no renewals for this agenda, but we did have four stipend positions. So I ask that the board acknowledge my notifications regarding um, personnel at this time. Do I have a motion? This is Ross Steinmer. I vote to acknowledge the superintendent makes notifications of personnel, specifically new hires, transfers, retirements, notifications, renewals, stipends for college people, 112, 4612, personnel certified, non certified, appointment, and conditions of employment as presented. Matt Van Armour, second. Is there any discussion on the motion? I would just like to comment on our stipends that again, we have a good majority of our in-town folks that are doing great work for us on this list. Do we have that many uh, that we need to They're co-coaching, so they're sharing one stipend. Thank you. Yes. Any other discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. My report also includes uh, information about family medical leave, interns, field trips, and uh, a policy. Uh, we have no FMLA requests, no interns or teachers that are new since the last meeting and no new field trip requests since the last meeting. However, we do have a request uh, from our Director of Curriculum Instruction and Student Assessment to dispose of out-of-date books. Um, and you'll and see this is my response. So I've already provided my response per that policy. The board does not need to take any action on any of these items. 
Okay. Next, we have the committee reports. Do we have, let's see, an update from the Achievement Committee? Oh, yes, thank you, Beth. About a week or so ago, the, uh, the uh, Achievement Committee met uh, with Jessica Rodraski, the Director of Curriculum, to discuss the goals that the um, Achievement Committee had set back in the fall particularly uh, for the, as we really uh, focused on the math learning for the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade uh, classes. Um, along with that, uh, Jessica will also present some numbers for the, uh, for Black Rock School, for their uh, math numbers as well. But at this time, I'd like to, to uh, pass the baton to Jessica Rodowski, the Director of Curriculum, Thank you, Dave, and everyone on the Board of Ed. Um, on behalf of the Achievement Committee, uh, thank you for the opportunity to present not only student successes tonight, but staff successes and parent successes as well, because we're all in this together. Do I have an echo? Okay, next slide. So wanted to re I wanted to re uh, revisit our vision statement for our achievement committee. And that is that in alignment with our five-year plan, Thomaston Board of Education will prioritize math student achievement in grades four through six in order to foster educational excellence in our schools. Next slide, please. So prior to looking at the data, I'd like to share some of the action steps taken in order to ensure optimal student achievement. And these were all things that were done either by myself, staff, um, parents, just everyone working together. The first one, um, we uh, looked at focusing our intervention groups on those skills that the students needed to um, revisit after they took their fall diagnostic. And so I spent quite a, a few meetings uh, working with our interventionists to make sure that not only the students who were in person, but those who were remote were also engaged in the learning process and they were moving along their way. In addition to that, our parent involvement, I wanna thank everyone who joined me on the Google Meets that we had back in the fall to talk about their students' math and uh, reading scores on the iReader reports that went home. So thank you for joining me. I believe we had over 45 parents from both schools, Black Rock and Center School, who joined me on the Google Meet and about 10 or so parents who reached out by phone. So thank you so much for being involved with us in this project. Um, we also had that fun day, the incentive program where we had the pizza parade over at Thomaston High School. We brought everyone over from Center School to celebrate the 8,000 minutes that they had achieved on their My Paths, which is their individualized lesson program through iReady. And it was such a nice time, especially since at the time we were remote, and the kids, I'm sure, missed their teachers and the teachers were missing their kids. And it was so, it was such a nice event to have everybody together and celebrate. And then of course, take a pizza pie home from Mona Lisa. So thank you to everyone who came out that, that day. Um, of course, differentiation and our fidelity to curriculum, that's an ongoing thing for teachers all the time. But just specifically on differentiation, you know, we really want to reach all of our students. And this year um, has been an extra challenge because we have some students who are remote and we want to make sure that we're, you know, giving them everything they need as well as our in-person learners. So um, it was a bit different this year, but, you know, we're continuing to work through all the challenges. The fidelity to curriculum as well. Um, our teachers, it was hard to kind of figure out what year we were in because last year we shut down in March. And so we didn't have our third full year of ready math curriculum. But then this year um, we're counting it as well another year, but is it a really a full year since we had so many different instructional models? So I would venture to say we're in our third year of ready 
math curriculum, but we're ready to, to hit the fourth year strong next year. And then our high need student focus, that is our IEP students, as well as our students who are free and reduced lunch, as well as students who um, were in intervention because they um, are lacking in a certain skill or skill set for, for math education. And lastly, our optimal testing conditions is something that we're always working on in the classroom. So when students take any standardized test, whether it's a diagnostic or a PSAT, we always want to ensure that they have the optimal testing conditions. And that is that students are quiet, that they've had breakfast that morning, that they are ready and available to learn, um, that they have all the tools that they need, their scrap paper, their pencils, um, and that they're engaged in the process. And probably the most important is that they have sort of that growth mindset and that they know when they sit down that as long as they try and they do their best, that's all we're asking of them. So we uh, wanna ensure that those optimal testing conditions are, um, are true for every uh, test that we take at our district. Next slide, please. So I wanted to give a brief overview of sort of where we were in the fall and where we are now. And I did include um, kindergarten through three on behalf of the achievement committee. They wanted me to show um, the board and all the uh, people on this call that uh, where we were and sort of where we are now. And I just want to direct your attention to that tier one and how that has increased tremendously in every single grade. Tier one, just as a reminder, is students who are on grade level or above. So that is that whole subset of students. Um, the other tier I wanna make mention of is tier three, and that is the tier where students are two years um, behind. And that has also decreased tremendously in every single grade. It's really important to note that we need to keep basically moving students to the left of this table. And as long as we move them from tier two to tier three to tier two, and then to tier one, that is the direction that we want them to go. Um, the other thing I'd like to note about this chart is that uh, districts across the state, um, especially on a lot of the forums that I'm on with other directors and assistant superintendents are having a tremendous problem in K-1, not only in math, but in their reading scores. And I'm really happy to report that uh, a huge shout out needs to be sent out to not only our pre-K teachers, but our kindergarten teachers, because if you notice tier one for math is at 55%, but in reading their score is 74%. I cannot tell you how difficult um, that is to achieve for our little guys down at Black Rock. And I also cannot tell you how, how different this is from so, so many other districts who are struggling to keep their kindergarten and first graders reading on level. As you all know, literacy in K-1 is critically important because once you fall behind in reading, yes, you can catch up, but it just takes so much work to do that. So we are going into the spring um, time very strong. Um, there's always room to grow and there's always room to do better. But the fact that we've had this pandemic this year and our students and staff have been able to do this is such a testament to not only what's happening in the classrooms, but what's happening at home with parents reading and making sure that students are reading at home and doing their my paths lessons and doing their homework and touching bases touching base with teachers i just want to thank all the parents and guardians out there because you are a part of this as well so focused in on our center school that's what our goals originally um, were and they weren't done based on the tiers but we'll get to that in a minute um, we achieved great gains, not only in tier one, but we lowered tier three, which is, again, our goal is to make sure that students are moving to the left on this table and are growing. And we will continue this 
for the spring. But um, I'm just just a, a huge shout out to Center School, our staff, our teachers, and our kids. They really did try their best. Next slide, please. So these were the goals that were created by the Achievement Committee, and I'll go through these quickly. We wanted 20% of grade four to reach their projected growth score. And if you remember, that growth score is set by the iReady program. It is a complex math mathematical algorithm where they look at students across the country in grade four, and they make a projection as to how that student should grow um, for the spring. And so we wanted to um, set these goals so that we uh, could see how our students are growing. So we did 30% for grade five and 30% for grade six, that th that percentage of students would achieve their projected growth score for the mid-diagnostic in January. Next slide. So here is where we felt, oh, my black is, um, the middle box is, I can't see that, Sue. Are you able to change that? Does everybody else see a black box in the middle? That must have just been the. Yes, it's black, yeah, Jessica. That must have been the um, the slides that I chose. The colors. Sorry about that, folks. I will um, look at my particular. Just give me one second. I'm just going to pull up my presentation. Okay, so in fourth grade, as you could see, we Jessica, certainly, Jessica. yep. Are you able to share your presentation? Yeah, I can, I can share my screen. I can do that. I was just going to read it off, but... Are you all able to see this? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oops, sorry. All right, so let me quickly move to that screen. Okay, so our percent of students who met their growth score for fourth grade was 46% and our goal was 20. Um, and then I also, what I decided to do is I decided to disaggregate the data a bit just to give us a little bit more information on where we fell with specific students. So our remote students were at 50% of meeting their growth score and our percent of high need students was 57% of meeting their growth score. Now, of course, these groups are a little bit smaller. They're subsets of the original but I just wanted to share those percentages. And I also uh, wanna make sure that we acknowledge the teachers on the left-hand side of the screen and our coaches. They are the ones that are working with our kids. They are on, they're, they're, doing, they're doing miracles on the, on the front lines. And I just, I can't say enough about them. I also wanna give a huge shout out to Ms. Sarah Midas, who is our remote math teacher. And with this uh, instructional model, uh, you know, it's so hard to remember that we have a, a teacher who's working remotely with our students. So her name is not on here and I apologize for that, but she worked with our remote students um, um, for math only. So she did a phenomenal job with, with those kids. And I just also wanted to say that for our remote students, um, we have a program called Securely. And when we look at optimal testing conditions at home, it's really nice when students know that um, you're with them, you're right there with them taking the test, just like we have it in person. And so what we were able to do with the Securely program that, um, that we purchased in Thomaston is to see the student's screen. And also we had them in breakout groups in their Google, in Google Meets. And in the breakout groups, there were different teachers, our interventionist and our math coach, you know, and they were, they basically had small groups of two or three students. 
And they were right there for them, just kind of being a cheerleader and, and saying, you can do this, keep going, take a break, um, you know, take a brain break, you'll come back, you'll do well. And so that program enabled us not only to make sure that the integrity of the test was good, but also to encourage our students to keep doing better. And I just wanted to share that with you, that these scores are valid and uh, we believe that they accurately depict what our students can do. In fifth grade, we had 48% of our students meet their growth score and our goal was 30. Similarly, our remote students um, were at 42% and our high need students, any student with an IEP or any student in intervention, um, those students reached a percentage of 56%. So it's really also nice to see that our kids in, uh, on the achievement gap are getting closer to, to the overall percentage. And lastly, our sixth graders were a bit shy of the goal. They came in at 27%. The goal was 30%. The remote students were at 56% and our high needs population was at 50%. So where do we go from here? Um, we uh, set up a couple of steps to kind of check in on ourselves. And the first one is I already had a meeting with Ms. Saramides, Sarah, um, our remote student teacher. And I checked in with her to see what her thoughts were on why some students did not reach their growth score. Um, and for some, it was as simple as, you know, they weren't feeling well that day or um, they, um, you know, they, they really weren't ready to take the test for whatever reason, but we, uh, I checked in with them and her, and we have a plan for the spring to make sure that they, um, all hit their growth score. So I'm excited about that. Um, for step two, we cross-checked our students who did not meet goal with their MyPaths math minutes. And, um, a huge thank you to Sue Dalka, our math coach. She already made this report for me. And there was a clear, direct correlation between students who did not achieve their math minute goal, which is approximately 40 minutes a week with not reaching their growth score. And so I really um, ask parents to support us in this. Um, and to please make sure that students are doing these individualized lessons because statistically when they do, they reach their goal. So I uh, just wanted to share that direct correlation that I found uh, this week. And lastly, we wanna continue to strengthen our instruction through walkthroughs and accelerated, accelerating students. And I just wanted to share, um, Superintendent Cost often sends me resources and one of them that really caught my eye this past week or two was this article that the state came out with. And that was that we should be remediating students in, in the present time while they are learning um, in the moment. In other words, uh, pulling students out isn't always the most effective way of remediating the skills that they need to catch up on. So for example, if we see a student who's having difficulty solving equations because they might be unsure of their positive and negative rules, we are to stop right then and there and work with them um, on their negative and positive rules and then go back to solving the equation. So in other words, using um, live instruction to deal with the deficit and then moving on um, to the, t the current um, grade level standards. And that can be done several ways. We have paraprofessionals in the room that work with small groups. Um, we, have, you know, we have time in the classroom where students are doing independent work. And so the teacher can pull a small group if they're alone. So there are a lot of different ways that we as administrators can share with our teachers how to do this. But that is what they're saying is the, the proven way to make sure students accelerate because we don't have time, unfortunately, with all the time we've lost this year to go back and catch up, as they're saying. There is no time to catch up. We have to find ways to uh, work with students in the moment. And so that's something I'll be working with teachers going forward. 
And lastly, we just uh, updated our goals. If you notice in the teal, those are our goals for the spring. So 60% of grade four and grade five will achieve their projected growth scores. And then for our sixth graders, it's going to be about 65%. Uh, we wanna make sure that we uh, have all of our students know that this is achievable, they can do this. And we will be right behind them cheering them on. And just again, I just wanna thank everyone for their support and um, everything that you all have done to ensure that students um, are just, you know, focusing in on their, their schoolwork and their homework and connecting with teachers and just everything that you do to support us at Thomaston. I really appreciate it. And I hope that, um, that you are as excited about these results as, as I am. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. That was a great presentation. And thank you to the Achievement Committee. Um, you have plans to continue to meet Yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I have to stop sharing, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs>
Is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the policy committee. Do we have an update from tonight's policy committee meeting? Yeah, um, this is Matt Van Ormer. Um, we met today and we had a presentation um, from um, about the homework policy, policy number 6154. Um, and we're looking to move that policy to a first read for next month's meeting. Okay. Any other updates? No action items? Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? This is Rob Steiner. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Have a good night.